Hey, what's up everybody? Joseph Williams here at Jaws Fitness. Today we're gonna to be talking about muscle force production and how you can utilize this information to your advantage to make your training better. All the pain. Hey guys, Joseph Williams here at Jaws Fitness. Please go ahead and like this video and subscribe to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about muscle force production. Uh, now, what exactly does muscle force production mean? Uh, basically, whenever you use your muscles, you're going to be producing some kind of force to move an object or to move your body or whatever it is you do in your daily task. You're so pretty. So when we talk about force production in the muscle, what we're really talking about is some form of energy causing a change in your muscle proteins to make them move. It's something called the power stroke. How does this work? Basically, uh, you have these uh, little enzymes in your body. ATP, for instance. I'm sure you guys have heard of ATP if you've been involved in exercise for a long time. ATP, uh, when it binds to uh, the, the receptors in your muscles, also called the myosin heads, what that's going to do is it's going to change the myosin just slightly. When it changes it, it's going to cause the actin. Uh, just look at this diagram right here. And what's going to happen is, is that actin is going to slide across. And when that slides, it's going to cause tension in the tropomyosin. See this little thing right here? That's the tropomyosin. So it's going to cause tension in that. When there's tension in that tropomyosin, uh, it's going to cause tension in the tendon as well. The tendon, well, using the bicep as an example, the tendon being attached to the bone, it's gonna cause the bone to move. That's what we're talking about when we talk about muscle force production. Now, there are three types of force productions, and I'm sure you've all heard of them. There's the concentric, the isometric, and the eccentric. Just to give you a quick example, let's grab a weight. Fortunately, I have plenty. So to keep it really simple, uh, we're just gonna use a bicep curl. To, to show as an example. So let's say that um, we're doing a curl as we're coming down into this negative portion. Get this cup out of the way. Into the negative portion, that's called the eccentric. So you're coming down, eccentric. The concentric would be coming up. Eccentric, concentric. Isometric is where you're right in the middle and you're just holding it. You can also think of this as the concentric, uh, the muscle length shortens, the eccentric, the muscle lengthens, and the isometric, it stays the same. Okay, Joseph, this is friggin' retarded. I already know this. Why am I wasting my time? Whoa, 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 whoa. It gets better, I promise, guys. So when we're talking about uh, your ability to train, uh, we want to look at uh, what your body can handle the best. So let's say that you are a perfectly fit individual and we're ready to just hit the ground running. I don't have to worry about you. We can do all kinds of concentric movements all day long. But let's say that you are someone who has cardiovascular risk factors. If we're doing a lot of concentric movements, that's going to increase your heart rate a lot. And when we increase your heart rate, if you've got a, if you have a cardiovascular risk, risk factor, oh, say that three times fast. Cardiovascular risk factors, cardiovascular risk factors, cardiovascular risk factors. Ha, ah, I did it. No worries. So, with, if you have any kind of cardiovascular risk factors, um, and we're increasing your heart rate, it's going to increase the blood pressure. We got problems. The great thing about the eccentric is, it's actually metabolically one-third of the cost of ATP as the concentric. And the reason for that is, is it causes less tension in those little myosin heads that I just mentioned to you previously. And because it causes less tension, it doesn't require as many ATPs. Those little ATPs, they're, they're so crucial when it comes to uh, your respiratory rates. And it, they're so crucial when it comes to how much or how hard your muscles have to actually work. So if concentric produces the most and eccentric produces the least, isometrics right in the middle. Why am I telling you all this? Because you may be somebody that wants to get into exercise and I don't want you going out there finding some kind of random exercise program on the internet 
that isn't catered to you that you're going to end up getting hurt on if you have some kind of cardiovascular risk, risk factor or if you've been sedentary for a long time because if you just jump in and hit the ground running chances are uh, something bad could possibly happen. So let's talk about how you can make this the most effective way for yourself. <clears throat> Do you guys hear how creaky this is? It's my freaking bench. If you have a workout bench that is that creaky, don't ever use it to bench off of. Ironically, I don't.